So uh, I will be uh, just switching over here. There's a slight issue with Keynote, hopefully not permanent. Uh, let me just make sure that we can play the slides uh, with everyone on the line. So hang on a moment. Okay, perfect. So uh, joining us today are uh, David Colantoni, Tony, uh, who's Director of uh, Product Management at Avid, uh, Matt Fury, who's uh, Product Marketing Manager uh, for Nexus Pro, uh, myself, uh, Graham Trail, who is our Support Specialist and Demo Guy, and Patrice Gutebel, our Product Manager. Uh, the uh, agenda for today is uh, that we will start off with kind of a high-level introduction of uh, the solutions uh, and the people. Uh, we will be uh, getting into detail about Nexus Pro and uh, the new bundles. Uh, after that, we'll drill down further and talk about Axel Video and our new Axel Starter software, which is included in those Nexus Pro bundles. Um, we have uh, the possibility of spending about 10 minutes after the demos uh, to talk about hardware configurations for running Axel. Uh, and then finally, we'll have about 20 minutes at the end for questions and answers. So it should be... Uh, oh, yeah, I think we have a little bit. Uh, if if uh, the presenters could go on mute, that would be good. Thanks. Still, he still hearing some background noise. All right, I think we can dive in. Now, before we, before we go uh, launching into the details, um, a couple of things. First of all, there's a question uh, section in GoToWebinar in your control panel. So if you've logged in through, if you're just dialing in or you're logged in through the browser interface, you may not have this. But if you download the GoToWebinar app, there, there's a question panel on the right. And you can feel free to ask a whole bunch of questions as the presentation is, is underway. Uh, we usually do our best to try and answer those uh, fairly quickly, not always in real time, but usually within a couple of minutes. Uh, we will also be collecting those uh, for the Q&A uh, Q at the end of the presentations, and we may also be able to interrupt our demos. There's some padding in terms of the timing here, so we can take a few minutes here and there definitely to answer questions uh, that, are, that are relevant to the topic at hand. Um, and in addition to that, as I say, at the very end, there, there will, will be uh, at least 15 or 20 minutes for Q&A. We'll also be recording the session. So uh, afterwards, there will be a recording available. If you miss something, uh, that link will be available to, to everybody who signed up for the webinar, whether they uh, attended or not. All right, and with that, I'm going to turn things over to Dave from Avid uh, to talk about the uh, Nexus Pro solution. So, Let me see the presenter. All right, we can see you. Okay, you got me? Perfect. All right, awesome. And thanks for um, having us here today. And thanks for attending and taking a little bit of time out of your data to, um, to hear us talk about Nexus Pro and our partnership with um, Axel. We're pretty excited about it. I'm Dave Colantoni. I've been at Avid over eight years now. I've run the Nexus and ISIS shared storage teams as well as the Media Composer team. Um, and uh, I wanted to talk a little bit today about Nexus Pro, answer any questions you might have. We have some exciting items that we want to talk about today around how we're um, positioning the product and our partnership with Axel and a few other things we're doing. Um, we started and introduced uh, Nexus Pro actually last NAB, and um, it's been it's been going great. It's been very well received. It's a generally a market that Avid had not um, played in as far as selling to a particular customer segment, and uh, you know we generally sold enterprise class storage or storage to post product larger medium or large post production houses, but we felt there was a need for us to get into. Um, different areas that needed to um, have a class of storage that um, represented what we had done with our 
ISIS product line and our history with MediaNet and Unity and all those types of things. So we, we introduced Nexus Pro last NAB, started shipping it around IBC, and uh, things have been going great. So in the market, we've, we've had a bunch of customers that have been giving us feedback on it. We really wanted to make sure we made a product that um, would address a lot of different needs in post-production, in houses of worship, in business, um, corporate environments, any different environment that needed um, this level of, of shared storage. Uh, you know, Barney Piling, the editor of um, Pilling, of the editor from Grand uh, Budapest Hotel, he's very much a user of the product. Um, he's been waiting for someone to make a product like this, um, and, and uh, he's using it every day. We've had some good feedback from a whole lot of different segments of the market, um, and you can see them here. You know, we, we started a journey, Avid Everywhere. I won't go too much into um, what this is all about, because I'm sure you've seen pieces of this if you've heard our CEO, Louis Hernandez Jr., speak to it. But what I really wanted to talk about with this is, um, you know, we're building out a platform here at Avid, Avid Media Central, and this has afforded us the ability to really reach out and touch other companies, other partners in the industry and allow them to participate in both the products that we make every day or making bundles or whatever it takes for our customer workflow solutions to be uh, solved. And really what we're talking about today with Axel is the ability and the introduction of um, a, a company like Axel to participate in this. Um, we all, everybody knows we sell asset management here at Avid. Um, Axel serves a particular need um, and we feel like there is an opportunity for them to participate in our platform, and that's why we're talking today. It wouldn't be possible without something like Avid Everywhere. Um, so we really have, uh, like I said, it's been very well received in the market, Avid Nexus Pro, and um, you know we've won a bunch of awards. This is an important proof point for uh, proof point for us because we, you know, we're a little bit unsure about what this product would do in the market. So we, you know, we've been seeing some success both with customers and then the industry adoption of it. We really wanted to um, make sure that when we built a product that we tailored it to address the needs of, of this market and that's you know really making it workflow driven and you'll see the addition of the bundles that we'll talk about at the end of this presentation to sort of drive that forward. Um, we enable up to 24 contributors. Um, that allows them to access the same assets simultaneously um, that's one of the great benefits of Nexus and formerly ISIS. Um, you can experience that simplicity with exceptional performance. We've really spent a lot of time making sure that the manager, the client manager is easy to interact with. Um, it's easy to administer. It's something you don't need to go and hire somebody to go do. It, it, it's self-sufficient. You can, you can easily uh, provision the features of, of Nexus. Additionally, we'll talk a little bit more about this in a second, but we really spent a lot of time making sure that Adobe and Apple and Blackmagic run on this, as well as a whole bunch of other partners. Um, and we want to make sure that people understand this is the same product um, and the same architecture that's running ISIS, that's been transitioned to the next generation Nexus that's installed in over 3,000 facilities in the world, and that's from the largest broadcasters um, in the world, that's you know things, pr companies that cannot go down, companies that need a performance that, to that level of um, capability. It's the same type of device. So what is it? It's um, you know it's an open workgroup storage for media professionals. It's been optimized for various products and tools in the industry, including Adobe Premiere, FCPX, Avid Media Composer, Blackmagic. Um, it handles 2K, 4K, Ultra HD workflows. It can connect up to 24 clients at one time. It's 20 terabytes, but it's scalable um, up to 80 terabytes. You can connect four of these together. And um, we have some features in the software that allows you to automatically redistribu redistribute your media to take advantage of, of the extra performance and capacity that you're going to use. And that happens all in the background. We actually creatively, creatively use um, SSDs for system configuration and media management and, and metadata management. That actually allows us to, um, to manage the media more efficiently to provide the performance that you need and guarantee the performance that you, you require. 
Um, it has protection for against two drive failures. Um, it's, we have this media aware accelerated drive rebuilds um, capability, so you're not waiting forever once you um, initialize a drive. It doesn't take you know days to do it. Does it very quickly. Um, we also have uh, replaceable storage controllers and power supplies and fans. Um, that that's all readily accessible. I think one of the other things that's changed around Nexus Pro is that we do accept um, Netgear switches and Dell networking switches and a whole host of others. Um, we really wanted to make sure that we were open on our networking capability. So this product is optimized for media collaboration and we're happy to announce our partnership with Axel today. Um, we're designing it for independent professionals, small, medium post houses, corporate environments, houses of worship, audio post production. Um, and we really do have Adobe Premiere and Apple Final Cut working on it very efficiently, just like a media composer would. Um, and then, uh, you know, of course, Axel is, is an, a, an addition to the family we're happy to talk about. So, you know, it's easy to use. I talked about this a little bit earlier. You can get started fast. It's a quick, simple setup. It's web-based administration. Um, it gives you complete control. The, the, it has powerful performance and logging tools um, to make sure that your system is efficiently running, that your system health can constantly be monitored. Um, it also allows you to, um, to uh, configure your, your devices, your workflow, your workspaces, your bandwidth management, your protection schemes, all through the same interface. And um, it's we spend a lot of time making sure that it's easily installable, of course, and that's a big deal when you you don't have a an IT professional on staff that can help you get this thing up and running. Um, so we wanted to make it simple, easy to um, administer group account control, and and allowing for um, you know things like workspace resizing and things like that. So one of the things we're pretty proud of is we spent a lot of time through the Avid Everywhere um, initiative making sure that these products work efficiently on our on our storage systems and we've you know interacted with many of these companies some of these companies have actually done work for us on their side and their software to work more efficiently with with avid storage it's not just for media composer anywhere anymore um, it works great with media composer but we want to make sure that people if they use other tools in the industry that they work um, they work just like they expect them to work on our storage and uh, this is a quote. We did spend some time with Adobe, um, and in, and they did some work on their end to get this uh, Nexus Pro product working. Uh, it's a nice quote from from Simon about Adobe Premiere. And then the the really um, important thing we wanted to talk about today was the introduction of workflow bundles, and this is where um, Axel comes into play. So we're introducing four bundles. Uh, these are in the market. They're purchasable today. You can purchase a Nexus Pro. We really wanted to have um, a, a starter type bundle, so we're introducing this as a limited time promotion where you can get a, a 20 terabyte engine with two Axel starter, starter media management licenses for $10,995, and then we grow up from there. Um, we have an Avid Pro Team bundle where we add in three perpetual licenses of Media Composer. So now you can see that you can start doing video editing, you can start managing your media, you have a professional storage device to store those on with connectivity up to 24 clients. And then we brought it to the next level at 19995 where we add in a switch um, in addition to the the starter media management licenses from Axel, we add a DNxIO, which allows you to get 4K monitoring and um, input through Media Composer. We increased it to five perpetual licenses of Media Composer. We introduced a software version of Pro Tools, so you can not, not only have media management, audio production, uh, audio editing, video editing, and then we include a, a year of uh, Nexus Pro support. And then we have the ultimate team bundle. And this is really um, everything but the kitchen sink for 21995 where we have the Axis Starter Media Management licenses, DNxIO5 licenses, and Media Composer. But we introduce real um, post-production capabilities with Avid Pro Tools, HD Native, and an Omni, uh, an HD Omni interface. 
um, and we add in the, the Nexus Pro support. So you can see what we're trying to stress here is, you know, not only does it work with the greatest tools in the industry to do the things that you need to do around Media Composer and Pro Tools, it works with some of the other tools that you interact with every day like Blackmagic Resolve or Adobe Premiere um, for a very, very um, good price. Um, and that is all I had right now. I'd be more than happy to um, take some questions as Sam is going through his presentation or we can stick around after and answer them live. Sam? Whoop, I just came off mute. Thanks, thanks so much, Dave. Uh, we already have actually uh, some, some uh, pretty good questions coming in. So uh, it, uh, it may be worth just diving in and, and answering some of those uh, while I'm on to the next part of the presentation. For those that have asked about recording, this, this is being recorded, and the recording will be online uh, later today. So uh, there were also some questions about specific network switch support uh, and uh, the cost. Actually, so here, here's one question that, Dave, you may be able to field, which is what's the cost for additional storage? Uh, so each additional chunk of storage, how does that work? Yeah, so you can see, like, if you purchase today, um, the the engine would be um, $10,995. So you would just add an additional engine, um, and that just connects perfectly to the first engine. So it's just doubling the price of the first, um, the starter bundle that we talked about. And then the networking switch, I'll, I'll answer the networking switch. Uh, we do support Cisco. Um, we do have an online it's probably best to go online about specific switches. If you have requests we'll, for a particular switch, we can certainly um, check it out and test them. We're constantly testing different switches from customer requests. Um, but I'll, I'll answer that specifically. Great, great. Um, yeah, I mean, one thing, just as a kind of uh, an observer to all of this, it's uh, it's pretty amazing to me that with the even the largest bundle, you're basically including everything you need to do a post production work group, like including I/O hardware and the Media Composer licenses for less than it costs to buy just the equivalent storage a year ago. So pretty much all you'd have to add would be like four or five laptops and a machine to run Axel, uh, and you know that that bundle for uh, for twenty three thousand is is pretty much an entire work group, which is uh, pretty neat. Yes, thank you, Sam. I agree. <laughs> so totally. anyway, that that being said, uh, uh, really appreciate your your uh, covering of, of the of the solutions. And what we want to do is talk a little bit about our component of those solutions, which is called Axel Starter, uh, and it is a new product from us. So um, it, it, it bears uh, discussion. Uh, also, we're going to be announcing at IBC the newest version of Axel 2016, which is our, our more kind of full-featured product, and that's called Axel 2016.2. So um, basically starting now, there's the Axel starter tier, which is included uh, with, with Nexus Pro bundles. Uh, I'm, and basically the same configuration is in all those bundles. And then there are upgrades available to Axel 2016.2 configurations. Uh, the majority of those are on the Avid price book. Some of the more uh, exotic ones uh, you might have to special order. But essentially our intent is that you'll get your, your core system from Avid with the two user Axel starter license and then you can decide uh, how much additional media management capabilities uh, you want to add to that. So the, the basic problem that Axel is in business to solve is, is this one. It's like, where, where's the clip? Uh, whether it's on shared storage or uh, as often as not a pile of drives. This is from an actual post house in LA, by the way, who will go nameless. But, uh, but you know, we, we meet with and visit uh, and hear from uh, hundreds of, of customers. We, we have today a little over 300 sites installed worldwide, so not as many as, as Avid, you know, they're, they're up at the 3,000 level, but, um, you know, for, for a smaller company, we're, we're making really good progress on that. And uh, what we hear is that the storage is very hard to search. 
uh, and you'll have you'll have clips everywhere. They'll have uh, a whole bunch of random names, very little metadata. Um, even when things are on shared storage, uh, Spotlight on the Mac does not support shared storage anymore. So effectively, when you connect up the storage, uh, you need a way to find stuff. And and we've heard from even very high end sites uh, like a large movie uh, studio in L.A. that keeping track of things like masters is still surprisingly hard to do unless you have an expensive complex MAM system. And those systems are really out of reach for the majority of small post-production teams. So we see our job as giving basic search capabilities, but also a lot of the other stuff that you would want to do with the MAM, like subclipping and take the experience that we've had with a larger, uh, more sophisticated system. Uh, including, of course, Avid Interplay, and and kind of scale it back so that it wasn't going to be mission critical. Uh, if, if it makes sense to make the investment in a larger system, then podge of like so and so trying to get an angle with his iPhone, some GoPros, you know, strapped to people's bodies. Um, there'll be a red camera and some XD cam and some DSLRs, and and the problem is traditional MAMs aren't really set up for this kind of uh, random media. Um, they'll, they'll typically try and regiment the workflow so that you pre-format it and kind of get it into a, a stream, if you will, um, that, that is well supported. But Axel is designed much more for this kind of Wild West situation where there's all kinds of media, including still images and loose audio files. We will catalog whatever we see. And uh, what we do is, if, if there's a file type that we don't handle natively, then we'll still let you tag it and still let you do some basic operations on it, uh, but we won't generate the preview. And so you'll, you'll just see a file icon. But for, for the vast majority of media file types, we can generate previews. And in the case of video, it's an H.264, about one megabit per second. So let me talk a little bit about Axel Starter specifically and kind of what's in the configuration. Uh, it's a very simple. UI, which by the way is now multi-language in our latest version, so uh, you can you can do a little pull down and set it for uh, you know French, or Japanese, or uh, Spanish, even Portuguese, variety of personalities. Um, that browser interface is you know doesn't require you to have Flash or, or any applications installed uh, on your local machine. Uh, it works with flat files, as I've mentioned, so essentially we'll catalog whatever media you have on your storage, um, and it it. In the Axel Starter configuration, it supports up to 300,000 assets. Uh, the larger Axel 2016.2 configurations support uh, above 1 million assets, so more than triple. Um, but we felt that 300,000 was a pretty good number to include with Axel Starter. Uh, and, and as I mentioned, it'll make H.264 proxies of all those, all those files and then give you a variety of workflow capabilities that Graham will be demoing. Uh, across those files. It also lets you set up uh, unlimited uh, custom metadata fields, and those fields can have different types, so you can have a text field, you can have a large text box, which is very handy if you're pasting in, say, a, a transcript or, uh, or, or logging information that was done in other applications. Um, you, you can also do uh, drop-down lists, date fields, radio buttons, so we probably won't get into all that detail today, but it's just good to know that that stuff is there. Many of our customers will only configure it with, you know, a half dozen very basic fields. Who was the producer? When was it shot? That kind of thing. And that's absolutely fine. Uh, there, there's another tendency that we're trying to sort of uh, uh, counterbalance is that in the past, MAMs were uh, ways to sort of for librarians to go nuts and, you know, have like 82 metadata fields, uh, to just a whole lot of uh, detail there, but if you're doing post-production work, you generally don't have time to fill out 82 metadata fields. So uh, Axel is really not designed for, for that level of granularity. It's designed for getting stuff done and adding enough useful tags, both in the fields and, as you'll see, in the timeline where you can do a mark in and out and put down comments. The, enough information there that you can find the important stuff later. Uh, finally, uh, the all new versions of Axel include what's called Elastic Search, which is a very powerful search capability and lets you narrow down your search just by typing more terms, a little bit like you would in Google or, or any uh, web search. But here it is searching your local media on the network. 
this is what the user interface looks like. It's you know fairly clean, and we'll get into a lot more detail, so I'm not going to dwell on, on these next couple of slides. But basically, there are flavors of the user interface that come up uh, on the iPad, on your mobile devices, and on Mac and PC. And we support most of the major browsers at this point, so Safari, Chrome, Firefox, IE. I briefly want to touch on what's in the larger version of Axel, uh, Axel 2016.2. Uh, as I mentioned, it handles over a million assets. We also add uh, our ingest capability from camera files called CAM. Uh, that is the ability to take in things like XD CAM, P2, and GoPro, which will often give you a pretty scrambled uh, file view uh, and flatten them out. We don't modify the media, and this is sort of in keeping with our general philosophy of not wanting to mess with your files or change your workflow, but we do a rewrap on the media and we clean up the, the, the folder organization so that you, you get one flattened clip rather than a whole bunch of folders you have to drill down on. And this was something we developed last year as, uh, as a response to some of our bigger customers' requests. We have one customer who's a, a news bureau in, in Hong Kong, and they had uh, 60 terabytes of P2 media just dumped on a NAS. Um, you know, not, not in live production, but when, when we cataloged it with Axel, it, it was all folders within folders within folders. And they asked us, asked us if we couldn't come up with a way to uh, simplify that for them. And again, it was something that an awful lot of our customers asked for, given the fact that so many camera formats are kind of incoming on these systems, and that if you just catalog them in place, uh, you can't remember where you left anything. Additional features that uh, you get with Axel 2016.2 are the ability to upload and download from within the browser interface. This can be very handy if you're at a remote location and you're not connected to the storage and you need to get a clip or a subclip. Um, we'll talk more about that, but obviously in the main Axel workflow, everything is done through the file system. You just save things uh, to the storage, you open things from the storage, and uh, Axel mostly just tries to get out of the way. But having this browser uh, upload and download can be useful. Uh, you can also customize the logos in the user interface, so you know you can can make it look like your brand uh, if you're a production house or corporate video site. And you can also actually have custom logos, one per user, so that if you're a post house and you're giving your clients access to the media, uh, they can get their own logo when they log in, you know, the old Coke Pepsi thing. So Coke can log in and get a Coke logo uh, and, and see just the Coke files. And Pepsi can log in and get a Pepsi logo and, and see the Pepsi files. As I mentioned before, you can also expand the software further uh, with, with options like integrated transcode, above and beyond the making of the proxies, in other words. Uh, and we, we do that currently with uh, Episode Pro uh, from Telestream, but we're actually going to be building on that in the next few months uh, to have a, a, a more scalable and really multi-vendor uh, transcode framework. Um, we already do a bit of that right now, uh, but you'll see us giving you more and more ways uh, and technologies for, for transcoding your media files. Uh, additionally, archiving, so there are modules, and these are on uh, the Avid price list for uh, interfacing with Archiware and Zendata. So if you have Archiware or Zendata middleware talking to LTO libraries, um, then it's, it's a very uh, clean integration. And Graham will show you how the archiving works more generally. Uh, and finally, baseband ingest. Um, we've re recently uh, done a, a really nice integration with Softron, um, where their movie recorder product is able to essentially capture video, and we can preview that in the Avid, in the Axel browser interface, uh, so that as the as the media are coming in, you can you can see what's uh, what's what's on the baseband connection. Finally. Uh, since this is a, an Avid Axel webinar, I would be remiss if I didn't mention OP Atom workflows. So right now, uh, Axel Starter and even Axel 2016.2 are all about flat file workflows. So finished clips, camera files, etc. Uh, but you would be, you know, reasonable to ask uh, why wouldn't you want to extend this to handle OP Atom media uh, that are being actively edited in Media Composer and uh, so we're we are all out to get that done uh, and expect a Q4 launch for it. 
and uh, the pricing has not yet been announced, but we'll be showing it a little bit of a preview here today. We'll be showing more at IBC, and uh, and then we'll be making a formal announcement about uh, pricing and availability. So a whole lot of things you can do with Axel 2016 too, um, but Starter is you know much much like the uh, basic bundle that Dave was talking about with Nexus Pro. Excel Starter is the starting point for all these, and they're all just additional licenses uh, to expand it. And this this slide is really here to give you an example of what many of our customers already do today. Uh, so typically, uh, we'll have you know not only Axel, but Axel running on say a couple of Mac Pros, where one of them is the database machine and the other one is the transcode engine. Uh, oftentimes, we'll recommend to have a small uh, commodity NAS that will simply be used for the H.264 proxies. That keeps a lot of the kind of uh, flotsam and jetsam of the smaller files off of your main working storage and lets it be that much more efficient. Uh, so maybe a dedicated proxy uh, store for that. Obviously, the main storage with your with your high res media, and then typically a third party archiving solution like Zendata, as shown here, or Archiware. Uh, so these these networks can extend out to dozens of users. Um, they can they can involve some pretty complex storage configurations because Axel does support multiple storage silos, and so you can really build out quite a bit uh, from the Axel starter entry point. So, so who uses this technology today? I mentioned before that we have you know 300 some odd customers. The answer is it's people who are trying to get a lot done with video with a relatively small team. So this is everything from the people you'd expect, like post production shops or or broadcasters, uh, to some people you might not expect, like corporate video, uh, educational sites, sports teams, houses of worship not-for-profits, advertising agencies, and governments. And in the latter cases, basically outside of traditional post and broadcast, we, we generally find it's like a five to ten person team. They have a ton of stuff, they have a ton of media coming in and very challenging workflows, uh, but they don't have the, the long tradition of a, of a big infrastructure that a broadcaster would have. So they're often starting from sneaker net or maybe some very basic shared storage, uh, they've obviously moved from SD to HD in recent years, but now they're having to tackle 4K and maybe VR and 360 degree video. So they're seeing the amount of video that they have to house really, really explode. Uh, and, and that is only accelerating with the advent of user generated content and social video, which is something that Axel can also touch on with our Pulse product. So essentially, these customers are, are having video come at them from from uh, kind of every side, and they need centralized, clean storage and management tools uh, to deal with it. So with that, uh, I think I'm going to turn this over to Graham, who can demo for you uh, the uh, Axel Starter product. And then I think uh, the plan is also for us to touch on some of the more advanced options that are available in, uh, in, in upgrades from Axel 2016. Dot two. So I'm just going to make Graham the presenter here. And I see a bunch more questions have come in. So uh, we will be, uh, let's see, I'm just trying to think if I can answer any of these before Graham gets started. Um, so here's a question. Are there any issues linking from and then transcoding to Nexus storage? Um, including Avid. So that's a pretty open-ended question. It's a good question. Uh, the answer is any workflow that you can do on shared storage, and in particular because you know Avid's Nexus Pro is very robust shared storage, any workflow that you can do on shared storage, you can watch with Axel. So it, it doesn't, and this is again very different from traditional MEMS, it doesn't have a check-in, check-out uh, requirement. So you don't, it do, you don't have to have media of a certain type for Axel to be able to incorporate it. And therefore, anything that you could do on the shared storage and, and with the editor, your choice, whether it's Media Composer, Final Cut, Premiere, um, you will still be able to do. The question is really, what can Axel 
add value to? Like, what's the most intelligent use of our software? Today, it's with flat files. Um, there are also things we can do in terms of transcoding those files and generating derivatives of those files. And so what we're talking about with the opiatum option in Q4 is to extend those further into the Media Composer environment so that it's not just AMA files and finished clips that we're able to catalog, but actually the work in progress. And uh, Patrice, our product manager, will be on uh, after the, the main demo to kind of give folks a preview of where we're going with that technology. So with that, Graham, I say, I'd say over to you. And uh, uh, are you off mute? I'm here, Sam. Thank you. Great, thanks. Go ahead. Sure. Hey, everyone. So I'm Graham from Axa Video. Like Sam said, I do a lot of uh, a lot of customer relations, a lot of support, a lot of demos, um, and I'm happy to show you the features of Axel Starter. So one thing to keep in mind as I click around the interface is that I'm actually running a full retail Axel 2016.2. The interface is almost identical between Starter and uh, and the the full version. So you know it's not like there'll be a big difference, but you might see a few features uh, that you wouldn't see in Starter, and I'll be sure to point those out. So as Sam said, Axel uh, connects to your storage, your Nexus Pro, and uh, indexes locations that you select and turns them into what we call catalogs. And catalogs are recreations of that storage location that you can navigate through your web browser. So we can see here that I'm, uh, I'm just in Safari. There's no special client software for accessing Axel. Uh, we want to make it as accessible as possible. So hosting a web interface means that it's easy to access from you know, PC or Mac or uh, you know, tablet or smartphone. As long as you're on the network and you have got a modern web browser, you can point it at your Axel server and log in. So, um, and just a brief sort of uh, how, how Axel Starter is introduced, um, it's included on a thumb drive that comes with your Nexus Pro, and all of the installation materials, all the documentation uh, is included on that thumb drive. So you'll be able to just plug that into the uh, Mac computer you'll want to use as your starter server, uh, copy all the stuff over there, and get started uh, basically right away. So we've tried to make it as, as smooth as possible. So uh, once you set up Axel and you tell it your catalog location, you'll be able to log in. Um, the main interface has been designed, as Sam said, to be very simple, very approachable, especially for non-technical people. Um, so very familiar if you've used programs like Windows Explorer or Finder, um, things that are already very well known to a wide variety of people for navigating files. And because Axel recreates the folder structure you already have on your storage, a lot of people, you know, sort of sit down to it for the first time, and it's very, uh, it's very intuitive right away. Because like, oh, I know these folders, I know all these files, um, and they just start working. So here in Axel, we can see uh, on the left this navigation column. The folder icon is a catalog, and as I said, just like Finder, Windows Explorer, I can expand that to view all the subfiles. Uh, or all the subfolders, I should say. So I can drill down as, uh, as deep as I like and see all the contents of my various folders. Then by clicking a folder, I switch it to the main view so we can see the contents here. Uh, now, as Sam said, what we see are proxies of the original media. So even though Axel is looking at your original media on the storage and um, if you do certain things like rename a file, like I can select any file, come to our action menu up here and choose rename. I can do things like copy files. So all those actions will affect the original file on the storage. So Axel can be used for some you know, basic file management. You can click and drag files around to different locations. And the idea is you know, if you're in Axel, you found some files and you realize you need to make a small change, you know, we don't want you to have to back out and go to Finder to do something simple like that. Um, although it's also worth noting that these features can be turned off in the user permissions, which we'll take a, a look at later. But uh, you know, if you hear that and you're already uncomfortable, like, oh, I don't want people renaming files or moving them around for the media management program, you know, that's totally fine. We understand, and that's something that you can turn off very easily for your users. 
Um, but in any case, so although we can affect the original files a lot of ways, the files that we see here, uh, and when we go into our video player, these are the small proxy files, and that's why even very large files, many gigabytes in size, in Excel will play, you know, almost instantaneously with no buffering or loading because it's actually streaming from, uh, you know, from that small proxy. So that's important to understand with Axel. Um, so we'll come back to that video player in a second. Uh, the core of Axel is its sort of metadata and search features that allow you to organize uh, your media. And as, uh, as Sam showed with that picture of all those drives, the core idea behind Axel is, you know, you're looking at this big pile of drives, where's your media? Axel gives you an interface and the tools to very quickly identify the clip that you need to and be able to use that in your workflow. So if I select any of these media clips, I'll see on the right this column fill in with information. So at the top, we have some, uh, some file details that can be uh, very good to see at a glance, like the file size and the frame rate, some other information like that. If I scroll down, I see the full set of metadata. So that includes custom metadata that I've created, but it also includes a lot of information that comes from the file itself. So if I open this video uh, dropdown, I have things like the creation time, the duration, a lot of codec information, um, just a ton of information that comes from the file itself, and that Axel makes available to me. You know, I can review it here in the panel. I can also search for it uh, using our search tools right away. And there's information like that for audio, technical information, and so on. So it's quite uh, expansive. Now, the custom metadata, though, is sort of the fun part. And this is all based off metadata fields that I've created. So we'll take a quick look at what that looks like. If I come up to our user icon here, I can jump to the admin pages. This is where uh, like we have user controls and stuff like that, which we'll come back to. So the data fields here allows me to create the metadata fields that I want. So you can see that uh, each field has its own entry. It has a name. It has a metadata type. Uh, and it has, if applicable, subvalues. So this is a radio button. So this has multiple options I can choose. And so I, I uh, predefine those subvalues. Whereas something like director is a text box. So I just type into that. And there's no need for, um, you know, to, to predefine any options. So now once I've created this scheme, I come back here and I can see all of those fields ready to fill in for each individual file. So if I hit the edit button, all of this becomes editable. So the text fields um, you know, come ready for me to type text into. The drop down menus are full of options that I can choose my selection from. My radio buttons have options. We also have a calendar. This expands out. So I can choose uh, you know, my shoot date in this case. We also have uh, a neat metadata type, which we call the large text field. And that expands out this column so that you can uh, sort of leave more advanced descriptions or transcripts. Um, it remembers line breaks. So I can leave uh, comments on multiple lines to make it a little easier to read later. Um, so again, it's just very, it's very good for when you have uh, longer, more elaborate notes that won't quite work in uh, the, the single line text field. We also have checkboxes, simple check yes or no. So you can organize, uh, you know, you can have, of course, any label. These are just examples that I've created. And you can mix and match, uh, you know, your scheme so it has all the different metadata types, all the different labels that you need uh, to, to create the scheme that's going to be most useful for your media. So once the metadata has been created, you can use our search tool to find it again. So this is the basic search bar. And it searches everything in Excel. So that searches file names, it searches metadata, it searches comments. So if I put in hockey, for example, uh, it's going to come back with a lot of results. There's a lot of footage related to hockey on here. I can scroll down. You know, I see there's a full page, and there's many more pages to go with results. So it's a little, you know, it's a little much. So in the basic search bar, I can add um, you know, another word to help narrow that term. So for example, we saw one of the locations was Boston. So I type in that, then that will further narrow the search. Um, so that's sort of the simple way to use the search. We also have an advanced search GUI. So if I click this magnifying glass, it pops open this extra window where I can snap together my own search and specify exactly the terms that I want to use. So it includes 
all of that uh, metadata that I've created right here at the top under custom. And if I scroll down, all the metadata that Axel has seen in the files also becomes available. So all that codec information, resolution information, creation information, that's all here and ready to use. So in my case, I've got my hockey project. And let's say I want it to be on a specific type of uh, camera, the like magic camera that we used. And let's try New York. I don't know if any are in New York. Yeah, no. So I can come back here and adjust my search. So you can see, there we go. So now we have a nice handful of files. So you can see as well that the advanced search can be directly translated into a syntax in the search bar. So we use the uh, Elastic Search Library. So power users, uh, you know, we've got documentation about how the Elastic Search syntax works. And if you want, you know, you can really dive in and create these very elaborate searches that reveal exactly what you want to find. Uh, but you know, for less technical users, more casual users, we've created this GUI that makes it very simple to create relatively complex. Uh, searches to help you narrow down what you want to find. Now we've been looking at media in the tile view, which really puts the focus on these thumbnails so I can you know identify them very quickly by hitting the uh, the sort of view toggle up here, I can swap to the list view and the big benefit there is that these uh, metadata fields become visible. So I don't need to select the file and then check the column. I can see the metadata for all of these files simultaneously by looking at the relevant columns. And I can adjust my columns with this button here. So any metadata field that I create will be available uh, as a column to add, or of course I can remove any of these columns as well. And I can sort my files based on uh, uh, the metadata that's been filled out. So this column view really makes it easy to identify uh, you know, what you're looking for because again, you don't need to click through every file to check that metadata. It's all there at a glance. It also makes it easier to select multiple files and edit their metadata all at once. So once I find the file I'm looking for, let's say this one up here at the top, I can click it to go back to the player view. Um, so I'll go ahead and play the proxy. It's not going to be very smooth over the uh, go to webinar connection, unfortunately, but it will give you, you know, just a sense of how the player works. Um, so from a from a hockey game here. So you'll notice that a message has appeared on the screen that says near goal. So that's a comment that I've left on this video. And you can see a white marker here on the time bar that corresponds to that comment. And there's a few more down the line as well. So if I uh, hover the mouse over each one, uh, the comment appears on the video. So as the video plays and it gets closer to these comments, it'll play, uh, you know, it'll replace the message with that new comment. Uh, so if I scroll down a bit, I'll see the comments we have here. So we've got a near goal here that highlights, you know, when a, a goal was almost scored. Um, an example comment here. So the big difference you might see right away is that this one has a long gray selection, whereas this is a single blue line. And the difference there is that when I left the first comment, I used the mark in and mark out tools to highlight a selection of the time bar and that way uh, I can see right in the comment what exactly is part of that comment. And if I click the comment, it'll go back to the beginning of that selection and play the video. Um, whereas this one, uh, by the wall, it's here at the end when there's a little bit of action in the corner here. Um, so these comments are great to use for uh, sort of bookmarking what happens as, a, as I've used them here. You know, maybe you have a long interview and there's a particularly good question or a good series of questions. It can be really helpful to highlight those with comments, and then when you come back a year later or whatever, uh, you know, they're highlighted there. You don't need to watch the whole thing again. But of course, comments can also be used as a collaboration tool. Uh, you know, who needs to do what where? Because we have this highlighting feature, you know, it's very easy to highlight a scene and be like, okay, we need to remove this, or, you know, can we obscure the brand, you know, that's visible on this product in the background? Um, you know, using these comments, you can talk to other members of the team and uh, you know, really make it clear what needs to happen in each particular section of the video. There's a few other features as well, like being able to sort um, your comments so you can change the order they appear. 
or just do a basic filter. So if I start typing a goal, for example, the other comments will disappear because they don't uh, have text that matches that pattern. So again, if you have a long conversation, these tools can really help you uh, zero in on what's important. So the other uh, big feature visible from the uh, player view is the subclips. And subclips is part of our Axel to editor workflow. So subclips are virtual files. You know, it doesn't create any, uh, any new media or anything like that. It's, uh, it's a marker in the time bar. So you can see here that this video has two subclips, one that's just the entire uh, video. And then that near goal section that I commented, I've also made into a subclip so I can easily bring that into uh, my editor. So that's what subclips are for. They're uh, XML files or they'll, you know, they can be turned into XML files. If I come into my bin here of action shots, I can see all my subclips. So you can have as many bins as you like storing uh, all these different, uh, all these different types of subclips. Um, so once I come to my bin, I can choose the subclips I'm interested in exporting to my editor. And right now we support uh, Premiere XML and Final Cut Pro 7 and 10. As Sam said, we're working hard on expanding our compatibility to, um, to different workflows, including the Avid workflow. So uh, Patrice will talk a little bit more about that uh, later. Um, but for now, you can export the XML. It'll just download through your browser. For example, and then you can go to your uh, Final Cut 10 and import that uh, import that XML and be able to view. Uh, and it'll basically it's a set of instructions that says, "Hey, go to the storage, go to these media files, bring them into the project, and uh, and you'll be able to edit them, you know, directly in the editor." So it makes it a lot easier to connect. Uh, from Axel to your editor. And one big advantage of the subclips is that uh, because anyone with permissions can create them, you can have like a supervisor or even a client, uh, you know, look through Axel, highlight the subclips that they like, and then, uh, you know, put them in a bin, and then your editor comes back later and can see that the bin's been set up, it's full of subclips, and can export them into the, the software and be ready to go. Uh, so one thing we have, as in addition to this uh, XML method, is a panel for Premiere Pro. So you can use the XML method for Premiere, for Premiere. but we also have um, this panel. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that. It's a very neat feature. So you can see that I'm here in a new um, Premiere Pro project. And if you look at my extensions along the top here, you know, I've got my source, my effects, over on the far right, I have an Axel window. And this allows me to log into my, uh, my Axel server. So you can see it's already filled in with information, localhost. I just need to put in my password here. So from here, um, I have a view into my entire Axel library. So I've got the bins, and this has all those subclips that we just saw. So I can select and import any of these. And I also have access to the library itself, so I can go through all these, uh, all these folders and files that we were just looking at in the main browser interface, that's also accessible here in Premiere. Now there aren't, um, you know, there's no metadata edits or anything like that, but I can use the search bar and it will use, um, and it will use the same metadata that's stored in Axel. It's just not visible to me through this interface. Um, so then I can select the media that I want to use, hit import, and it'll go ahead and bring that footage into the current project, as we can see down here. So uh, again, it's a little, a little more streamlined than the XML route, um, and just a very handy feature for those with uh, Premiere Pro uh, workflows. So back in Axel. Um, so all these features, by the way, are uh, are in starter. You know there are some limitations that Axel mentioned before, like the uh, three hundred thousand asset limit. You know that's something to keep in mind. Um, but uh, but everything we've covered so far has been has been, is uh, is included in the starter. Uh, so another Axel feature that I like to cover is our archive feature. So the archive feature allows you to designate a specific location 
as an archival location and then easily copy files to that location. So if I come into, uh, let's look at some of our iPhone footage here. Um, what I can do is select a few files, again, come to our action menu. I've got an add to bin option if I just want to add these files as, uh, as subclips to one of my bins. So that's a helpful shortcut right here. And then I have add to archive. And you can have as many archives as you like, distinguished with names, and each one is just a location on the file system. So it could be on the storage, uh, it could be on you know, the local server or on a different drive, um, whatever the actual server can reach. So now it gave me the notice that's archiving these files. If I open this uh, job monitor, I'll be able to see the progress. In fact, it's already done. Um, you can see the full 100% here. And now these two files have these white triangles next to them. And what that tells me is that the file is both on the local storage and on uh, the archival location. So it's in both places at once. Now if I want to you know, remove it from the uh, original location, so I free up some storage space, I just come back to my action menu, choose delete high res from tier one, and that, uh, that gets rid of the original. It replaces it with a little bookmark file. It's a zero byte file, but it just gives it a, make sure that there's a location to restore the file to later. Um, and so now we can see that that triangle has been filled in. It's a dark triangle, which tells me that the file is only in location and it's no longer on the original storage. But you know, as you can see in Axel, very little actually changes. I can still click the file, I can play the proxy, um, I can leave comments, I can edit the metadata, it'll come up in searches. Um, so by using this sort of proxy workflow hand in hand with the archiving process, I can actually offload a lot of my media, you know, maybe it's stored on tape, maybe it's stored on drives that are, you know, put in a secure facility. Um, but even though all that media is no longer locally available, because Axel keeps the proxy, keeps all this metadata information, I still have uh, a lot of knowledge about what's in my complete media library. And when I realize later, like, oh yeah, I, I want to use that file, I can just return that file to that archival location, like if you've written it to tape or shipped it off or whatever, you know, just, okay, put it back in that archive location, and then I can come up here, hit restore from archive, and Axel will take that file and put it back uh, where it was on the storage, ready to use uh, in your editing workflow again. Um, so this archival tool can be a very powerful way to, to keep on top of your media, even after it's been archived long term. So there is the CAM ingest feature that I like to show you. Now this isn't included in the starter, so that's important to keep in mind. Uh, this won't be bundled in, but it is available uh, you know, to anyone who upgrades. Um, and CAM is how Axel deals with um, camera files. Uh, so files that aren't uh, flat, you know, that have their own folder structure, like P2 files and so on. Uh, you, can, you can give these to Axel and Axel will simply recreate you know, what it sees. So you'll get this whole folder with this whole folder structure, you know, not the most useful. Um, and of course, it can be kind of a pain to, to deal with these files. So for example, I have, um, I have two finder windows here, one with the CAM folder and one with uh, an XD CAM file. So if I go and look at that, we'll see you know, there's card one, then that has a subfolder, that has a subfolder, and then each individual shot has its own subfolder that's full of, of different files. So it's you know kind of very unwieldy. There's a lot of uh, there's just a lot of clutter. Um, so what Cam does through uh, a watch folder workflow. So uh, Cam is looking at the specific folder in this case called input, and you can have as many uh, watch folders as you like. Um, it'll just wait until it sees a new file and then uh, start working on it. So I've placed this file into here and we can see that already Axel Cam has started working on it. We can see the name of the file. Uh, it's scanning it. It'll show us it's the shots it has. So we'll come back to this a bit later because it needs to scan it and go through. Now it doesn't take long at all. You know, it's already found eight shots and so on. But, uh, you know, we can see it's already making the it's already rewrapping the footage into this flat MOV format that Axel will be able to use. Um, so we'll come back to this in just a few minutes and it'll be all finished. So in addition to the uh, commenting feature that I was showing you earlier, we have a approval feature 
sort of another collaboration tool. Uh, so each file, you may have noticed, has this hollow ring, this white circle. By clicking it, I can, ease, I can quickly change it to approve, maybe approve, or reject. And that lets me see at a glance uh, what the status is of that clip. Um, and of course, it becomes searchable right away. Uh, there's a approval status here. And you can change you know, the different status. And of course, it's very easy to just type approved into the search bar, and that'll show you all your approved clips. Um, Axel has an email notification system that can send emails to different team members when certain things happen. One of those is leaving a comment, so people know, oh, there's a new comment. And one of them is changing the approval status, so people can say, oh, you know, my supervisor just approved this file, now I can start working on it, or maybe a client approved it. Um, so again, that's part of the sort of streamlined collaboration workflow that makes it very easy to, to work quickly with your media. And uh, you know, once the approval is no longer relevant, it's very easy to clear, just like that. So now we come back to CAM. We can see that everything's done, 100, 100, 100. So the way it's been set up, it actually goes into my, um, into my catalog here. So if I come into input, I'll have the XDCAM folder. And here's the shots. It looks like Axel's still making those proxies. Uh, but now, you know, instead of a subfolder with each, um, you know, each full of media, each one is a single MOV file that I'll be able to play in Axel. So you have this icon tells me that Axel's still making a proxy. We'll take a look at that later. So there's a few um, quality of life features that are in the full version of Axel that aren't in the starter version and they're also worth looking at very briefly. Um, you can download files to your local system. So just select a few files I like to use, come to my action menu, and I've got download here. And that allows me to download either the high-res original file or the low-res proxy. Um, so again, great for remote workflows. And another feature is the upload feature where I can navigate to a location on my storage choose upload, and then um, you know, add files through the upload tool. And that'll take files from my local storage and place them into that location uh, on the Axel server, or you know, on the storage that the Axel server is connected to. So yeah, OK, so we can see a few of these are filled in. So now here is that footage from CAM, um, you know, made into a single flat MOV file. Proxy plays beautifully in Excel, um, and it's ready to use. So again, very quick, uh, very easy way to take these more complex, more cluttered files and turn them into something very simple and, and sort of ready to use in Excel and, and elsewhere. So lastly, I'll just take a quick look at some of the user controls uh, just so you can understand the breadth of power you have over your users. Um, you know, permissions and user controls are very important to any uh, management system. Um, so we've tried to accommodate a lot of different styles by being as granular as possible. So here you'll see your list of users on the left. Here we've got me, Axel. Um, and each folder or each user can have access to specific folders. So here I've got the full media catalog. But I can actually choose any subfolder of that catalog. So I can expand it. I can drill down and just choose a single subfolder. Um, you know, or I can choose several subfolders to give them access to. We really try to let you have uh, as much control as possible. And for each location I choose, there's separate permissions that I can turn on and off. So I can have full permissions in one location, like being able to see the previews or manage and edit files like we were talking about before, you know, being able to move files and rename them and so on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so maybe somewhere I have full control, but then in another location, that's going to change. So, okay, I can't edit files, I can't approve files, I can't manage them, I can't post comments. You know, maybe I can see the previews, I can change the metadata, I can add them to the archive, you know, but that's it. So it's, I have a lot less control over files in that uh, folder than I do in another folder because, again, we allow that type of, uh, of granularity in our permissions. Uh, we also have these universal permissions, like who's an administrator, um, who can share files, who can change their preferences. It's all stuff that you can change. And because that's not related to any specific location, uh, that applies everywhere throughout Excel. 
Um, actually, I said users was the last thing I wanted to show you, but that reminded me the share feature is very neat. Um, so I just want to show that very quickly. Um, the share feature allows you to generate a link that you can then distribute to people who don't have an Axel login uh, and lets them see those proxies. Um, so I can choose a few files here, come to share. That gives me this link, which I can copy. I can have Axel email it by putting in recipients here, and I can set how long this link will work, up to a month. Um, so in this case, I've gone ahead and copied that uh, link. I paste it in, and these are the files that we uh, that we made with Cam as well. So you know, I can take these camera footage, put them in Cam, and then you know generate a link and distribute them to whoever needs to see them. You know that process, that whole workflow can happen very quickly. So you'll see here that I have access to the proxies, but you know I can't navigate anywhere else in Axel. I can't view or edit metadata. You know, no comments. Uh, you know, so it's very controlled. It's just a way for people to see the footage. And you can change the approval status as well. So if you're sending this to like a supervisor or a client, you know they can be like, oh yeah, this looks good, or you know, oh maybe this needs some work. Um, so they can change that status. Uh, but really, you know, very limited access to your system, but a great way to get these people viewing your media without needing to like upload a file to Vimeo or Dropbox or anything like that. Just a link to the Axel system that you already have. So okay, Graham. Well. Oh, yeah. I think um, I think I'm mindful of the fact that we want to leave some time for Q and A at the end. Yeah. So um, yeah, and for those that are wondering, Graham's got the metadata fields up. This is where you specify the metadata fields in Axel. But I think I think we're at a good handoff point. I, I want to briefly run through the configurations uh, for running Axel, and then hand the floor to Patrice for a, a preview of our uh, OP Atom functionality because I know there's probably a lot of interest in that on the line. So um, let's just uh, quickly talk about hardware configurations. I'll just take one or two minutes here. Uh, Axel will run on any Mac that is quad core or better with 8 gigs of RAM and running Yosemite or higher. And it obviously needs to be networked uh, directly to the Nexus Pro You know, on the same switch. You wouldn't want it uh, in a different department or something like that for performance reasons. Um, so there's a number of configurations that we recommend. Uh, there's our original, what we used to call Axel Gear, which is a couple of Mac Minis, uh, or even one Mac Mini um, it, with an i7 quad-core processor. Apple isn't making these right now, so it's a bit of a nostalgia item, but uh, we're hopeful Apple's going to be making some hardware announcements later this fall. We will see if there's a Mac Mini configuration that uh, has the horsepower for Axel. Um, you can also, by the way, use iMacs that are quad-core. Um, a lot of people are running Axel on last generation Mac Pros because it doesn't make any demands on the GPU and therefore an old Mac Pro with a you know 8 or 12 core Xeon is a fantastic machine and they're practically free these days. I mean you can get them on Craigslist for one or two thousand dollars. So if you need a machine to run Axel that's uh, probably a good place to start. Of course you can also buy the current Mac Pros, those are a bit more expensive. Uh, and they, they also go up to 12 cores and uh, in, in some sense are the most future proof because at some point Apple will stop upgrading the OS on the older Mac Pros, but so far they haven't. Uh, so, that, you know, when, when cost is no object or you need a new machine, uh, using one or two Mac Pros is, is the way to go. And uh, there's even rack mount, uh, Sonnet makes a rack mount box where you can put a couple of Mac Pros in. So for our transcode configuration, um, we have customers that are running the database and, and uh, web server on one and the transcoding on another. So that's really kind of the ultimate setup. All right, with that, I'm going to hand things over to Patrice for the OP Atom preview. And again, this is going to be uh, an extra cost option, and we'll be making more announcements about this uh, at IBC and beyond. But, but we are looking to ship this in Q4, and it's obviously a really key ingredient uh, if you have customers that are doing uh, intensive media composer workflows on Nexus Pro uh, and want to use Axel with those. So go ahead, Patrice. Sure. Thank you, Sam. Uh, so there were a lot of questions about Avid and what we have planned. Uh, so the first thing to to know with Avid workflow is when we have the workspaces 
each uh, tracks are separated. So we have video tracks and audio tracks. Uh, so basically what we have done with Axel is uh, an asset analyzer. And by that, so let me just log in into my Axel system here. And I'll briefly show you how you can add a new catalog into Axel from the admin pages. So basically you can either add a different path. So whatever you have in your Nexus Pro, you can definitely add it. But if you have the Avid Media files, you can definitely add this and specify Axel it's an Avid catalog. From there, we are going to analyze the asset thoroughly and determine what is the master clip, grab the name of the master clip and asso associate all the tracks into it. And you can basically preview in our kind of debug interface here what we do have in our workspaces. This is outside of Axel. This is an interface that uh, is simply there to troubleshoot. For example, I can see that one of my media has not been fully rec recognized in the, in the uh, workspaces that I have. So here in my Finder, I brought back to Finder, you will see my Avid Media Files folder and I have two workspaces in my MXF folder as well as regular file formats that are outside of the uh, Avid workspaces. And this is how it will look like in Axel. I'm going back to my Axel interface, I'm logged in. You have the regular files that the same as uh, Graham showed you. If I were to go to my Avid Media Files right here, I will have the other format. Again, I can expand, and you will see that these are just treated as normal, uh, as Axel would do. But if I go inside my, my MXF folder, I will actually merge all the workspaces together. And from there, you will see that I do not have exactly what I have in my workspaces. Uh, you will see that I have multiple files, the creating folders, the uh, database files. None of that is shown up. You don't see each atoms. All you see is the master clips that have been reported. And so what I can do from there is simply click on the asset and we generate an H.264 proxy for the master clip. And you will have the audio, you will, uh, you will have the, uh, the we uh, mix the two first channels of the audio into the H.264 proxy, and you have the same features that you will have in Axel, moving frame, frame by frame, uh, mark in, mark out, and post the comments right here. Uh, you can create the sub clips as well. So if I were to create a bin, I'd be able to, again, create mark in and mark out and make sub clips in, in my bin right here. So all the features that you have in Axel, custom fields, I can do a search as well. So if I do, for example, Formula One search, I will retrieve the clips that I have and I can do approved. All the features that you have in Axel are available as well on the Avid workspaces. The simple difference is you will not see the files on your storage. You will see a, a reference to the master clip that you have in your workspace. So this is the overview of how Axel will catalog OP item files. And once I go to the bin, I do not have this feature ready. But there were a lot of questions about what do we do with the clips, how it is going to look into Media Composer. So I'm just going to briefly talk about it. In here, we have the export of the XML for Premiere or Final Cut Pro you will have an additional option that will create an AAF file. And this AAF file will be a sequence. And this sequence will contain the subclips that you have, as well as the markers. So for instance, if I were to create an AAF file, this AAF file will not embed the media. It will point it to your Nexus Pro storage or any storage that you will use. What it will do is it will bring in the sequence with the, mark with the selected clips and all the markers that you will see in the clip itself, such as here ready, will be shown with a black dot as you will expect any kind of timeline metadata to show up 
in Media Composer. And this is something that we will be showing off at IBC. Uh, I would strongly encourage you to come. We are welcoming any comments, any questions, and any path forward that you would have based on your needs. I already know that there are a lot of questions about can we use Link for the flat files to bring it to Media Composer? Can I import AAF files back into Axel? So we have a lot of actually very good questions, very good workflow requirements that will help us make your life easier. That's a very short overview, but this is basically what, uh, what is coming at ABC. And uh, we will be there and showing you the AF export as well at IBC. And that's unfortunately all I have to show right now, but that welcome. sounds great. Any comments? Thanks. <laughs> no worries. Thanks, Patrice. And I should mention, by the way, uh, both Patrice and I are very available for requests, uh, customer dialogue about some of these uh, planned features. Uh, Patrice is just patrice at axel.video. I'm Sam at axel.video. And uh, we, we really uh, are, are looking for as much uh, feedback and even beta testers uh, as we can at this point. Uh, again, the, the, uh, the IBC uh, demo will, will still be a technology preview at that point. Uh, but we are looking forward to be able to commit to a ship date in Q4 as well as for pricing on that. Because it will, it, it will be an extra cost option that will be part of the, uh, the very base package. Uh, but thanks, Patrice. That, that looked great. No problem. Uh, so at this point, uh, we have a time. By the way, this is the first. This is a new world's record. The first time that we've had an Axel webinar where the questions have filled an entire page on my Retina Pro, my, my MacBook Pro Retina. It's basically, uh, you know, all the way to the bottom. So you guys have had some great questions, and hopefully we've been able to answer them uh, in, in a reasonable way. Uh, but feel free to ask more because we do have 10 minutes left. And also, uh, the folks from Avid are still on the line. So, of course, um, if there's any uh, questions uh, circling back to the Nexus configurations, that's another thing. Um, I know Dave put up a slide about the different configurations, but uh, the fact is there's, there's a lot there. And uh, so I, I imagine there, there will be some questions about that. So let's see, any more questions? Um, from the AVID side, uh, anything you guys, oh, here's a bunch of questions just rolling in. Um, can we increase Axel media seat number in a bundle? What is the cost? Very good question. So we basically sell uh, licenses in five packs, and those are uh, $2,495 for a five-user license. So there's a two user that comes with starter, and then you can upgrade. Uh, you can also, this is a kind of subtle point, but the two user that comes with starter is limited to three concurrent sessions, because the idea is it actually should be two people. So maybe it'll be, you know, two people in a browser and then a third person on a, on a premiere panel, but that's, that's the hard limit. Uh, there's a two user version of Axel 2016, which does not regulate the number of sessions. You just have two logins, uh, so you could have one called admin and one called editor or whatever, but we actually don't uh, force your hand or say like, hey, you've got two people logged in as editor. Um, in the larger packages, when you buy the five user pack, those are five additional uh, named users, and there is no session limit. Um, here's another question. Uh, what about drag and drop directly from your browser into a bin? Um, so I think the question, was that in Media Composer or uh, in uh, Premiere or in Final Cut? Because each of them has different limitations on what you can do in the application, and we're trying to work within those limitations. So in Final Cut Pro 10, they don't let you build a panel of any kind, so we're doing it through the XML. There's no, there's no drag and drop because the browser doesn't by itself support drag and drop. Uh, and, of course, we have to support multiple browsers. Um, in the case of Adobe, we kind of got around that with the panel. Uh, in the case of Media Composer, uh, as, Premier, as Patrice mentioned, we're looking to do an AAF export, uh, at least in the first generation. But obviously, we would love to have tighter integrations in the future. So uh, let us know what your thoughts are. Um, let's 
see. Um, wow, lots more questions. Uh, yes, any way to federate multiple Axel local repositories, as Patrice answered on, online, uh, we, we would love to be able to do that next year. There are some things about our architecture that make it very straightforward to do. For instance, we do use Elasticsearch, and it's really good at pooling search data from multiple uh, SQL sources. So in a sense, the plumbing is there to allow that, but it's one thing to say the plumbing is there, and it's another to actually do it. So. I would not expect that in the next uh, four or five months because of the amount on our plate, but uh, we, we are definitely looking at doing it uh, perhaps second half of next year. Uh, training. So uh, that is a good question. We, we're doing some very initial training videos similar to what we've done here to kind of give people a heads up on how to talk about Axel, how to configure it. Uh, we are also available. You know. We, we and Avid both uh, sell professional services so that uh, basically billable by the half day, but we can absolutely spend time with you and your users. Fortunately, Axel is fairly simple to configure, so it doesn't go into weeks or anything like that. Uh, a typical proposal would be for you know one or two or maybe three days. And uh, some of our larger customers have commissioned really entire projects uh, where we and the storage partner have come in and, and done more of an end-to-end -end solution. But if it's simply a matter of training uh, your, your editing team and maybe some producers and so forth, uh, you probably want to budget a half day or a day for that. And we can we generally do that remotely by a, by a uh, webinar and phone. But if it happens to be uh, in, a, in a convenient location or if we can fly somebody there, Neil is based in London. Uh, our headquarters is in Boston. Uh, I and one other person are based in New York. And then we've got a West Coast guy as well. So if we can come to your location and, and you know, charge some modest uh, travel costs, uh, we prefer to do it in person. Um, OK, here's a question for Dave. Does the Nexus Pro support project and bin sharing? So it's kind of a softball, but uh, there you go. Over to Avid. Thank you. Yes, it does, of course. Um, yep, that's uh, one of the advantages of, of um, Media Composer. It certainly does. Yeah, and that's that's also one of the sort of un, maybe uh, un, unspoken advantages of the Avid storage environment is that you've got all those those Media Composer integrations uh, built in. They're not they're not kind of bolt on and they're not reverse engineered. So uh, you, you've got really good uh, Media Composer workflow support. Um, here's a question for FCPX: Can you import Axel metadata and collaboration markers? Uh, currently, no, but that is, you know, people keep hitting on like the, the interesting, tough problems that we are uh, approaching. That one um, is something we'd love to do. We'd like to have a, a, a FCPX integration that is as slick as our Premiere integration, and, and of course, we'd love to meet a composer, all three to really uh, uh, be uh, tightly integrated. So we are working on that, but we haven't made any announcements yet, uh, and we can keep everybody posted. Um, uh, here's a question, does a single Axle starter support more than one Nexus Pro? The answer is yes. We have not done anything to limit the storage access capabilities in Axle starter. Uh, in fact, you may, may remember that block diagram where we showed it with, a, um, uh, with an external uh, low-cost NAS for proxies. So you can have multiple storage volumes, uh, and you can basically point Axle at any mountable file system from your Mac. That could be another Nexus Pro. It could be a traditional like XAN or something like that. It could be ISIS. Um, so whatever combination of new and existing storage that you have, each one does have to be a separate catalog. So uh, we, you know, we generally recommend that you not have more than, say, a half dozen catalogs. But um, there are even tools for if you create a metadata schema, you can basically copy and paste that metadata schema across catalogs, so you don't have to recreate the, uh, uh, the schema multiple times if there's a lot of drop-down items and so forth. So we've, we've, we've tried to make that a fairly simple process. Uh, but, but just to take a step back, Axel does basically give you the ability to customize the metadata schema uh, for, each, for each catalog. All right, we are right close to the end of time here, but one last question. Uh, I didn't notice when you showed the demo, but can you get proxy clip playback in the Adobe panel? The answer is yes, you can. Uh, you can play there and, and uh, scrub and then decide whether to uh, bring that material 
into actually Patrice I should ask is there scrubbing on that one or just or just a play button yeah no no there is scrubbing it's a plain html5 player like you will have on the browser so you you can scrub uh, you can scrub on the player it's not as advanced as what you will have in the actual player but you definitely can scrub All right, thanks so much. So again, congratulations everybody on the really fantastic questions. We also had a great turnout today. You know, about two thirds of the people who signed up attended and we'll look forward to getting the recording out so that you can spread the word uh, to your coworkers or answer uh, questions for yourself if you miss something. Um, we are available to answer more questions uh, both uh, on the Axel side and the uh, AVID side. And uh, I guess I just, want to emphasize uh, that we're, we're delighted uh, to be doing this and hope to see many of you at IBC in a couple of weeks. So thanks again for your time and uh, look forward to further discussion. Thanks a lot.